masters. Good afternoon. So, um, the purpose of this speech is to talk about myself privilege. I would like to start with, with a quote. It goes like this. You are the sum total of what you have seen, eaten, heard, smelled, uh, for what told about. So everything around you influences. So like all of you, I am also sum total of my experiences. I would like to take this opportunity and share my experiences with you guys. So I was born in a place called Gundapan Bhakka in Maharashtra. And I'm the second kid to my parents. Uh, my parents were expecting boy kid when my mom was carrying me. And then when my father heard it's a girl kid again, he was very upset and he didn't come to see me. When he finally saw me, he was even more upset because I looked like a malnourished kid, it seems. <laughs> Bony, long and brownish complexion. He was not happy with it. As a second kid, I never got special attention from my parents. Like, that, it happens uh, at least in the middle class families. I was very silent, obedient kid. I was very scared of my father. I would never open my mouth in front of him. I would always go to my mom whenever I wanted something and get her to talk to my father and get me stuff. So uh, I was very attached to my mother. I would never leave her and go to any relative's place, stay over and all that. So even during summer vacations, I would stay with her at home. Would never go to anybody's Sorry. place uh, for the vacation or to grandparents' place. I never played cricket. One of my favorite uh, <coughs> play was playing with marbles. It's called goti in Kannada. Many of you might know. So during summer holidays, morning till evening, I would just play marbles with anybody and everybody. Just that they want to. They should have an intention to play with me and then they should have marbles also. I wouldn't buy a single marble, I would borrow it from friends and then play with them and beat them. I would actually go from zero to hundreds at the end of summer. And my father never got to know about it. Uh, so if you guys uh, can recollect uh, in movie uh, uh, DDFJ, where uh, Amrish Puri is a very strict father. And <laughs> <laughs> Kajol and her sister act very nicely when he's at home and are very naughty when he's out, right? The same thing would happen at our house also. My father would leave at around 8.30 in the morning to his office. And we will we'll all be silent and nice, helping mom and all that. Once he's out, we would start our thing at home. So that was us. Whenever we went to uh, any family gatherings, relatives' house for the function, to attend functions and all that, my father's elders would actually uh, tell him that how much he is in trouble because he has three girl kids and how much he will struggle in future to get us married. And they would actually advise him to save lots of money so that it becomes easier for him later on. I would actually get very angry at them at times, when my father is not in sight, I would go to them and fight with them, saying that I'll grow up, become a teacher, and support my father financially. I've done it many times. And then I would pray to God that, God, I should go grow fast, get a job, help my father financially, and then prove to those guys that girl kids are not burden to their parents. So actually, my father did have financial problems. <coughs> I remember an instance where uh, I was supposed to get operated and the operation cost was around 3,000 rupees and my father had to borrow it from multiple people so that to make it happen. So there are many instances my father struggled financially and I guess those instances and people mocking at my father because he has three girl kids motivated me to study well. And I did study well and did very good at academics. Uh, well, I passed with very good marks in 10th and then when I went to do my PUC in Dharwad City College. So the real struggle started for me. Uh, having studied in my native, native language, it was very difficult for me to adjust to everything in English. 
So actually, whenever in groups people are talking in English, I wouldn't understand a single word. I would just laugh whenever they are laughing. I would just nod when they are expecting some acceptance from me. But then that did help me when I was in classes because I had to really understand what the lecturer is talking. So, uh, but then I didn't give up. I went to lecturers. I would cry in front of them, tell them I'm not understanding what you are talking in the class. Please uh, translate. Sometimes at least the tough words translated in Kannada and explain. I wor worked really hard there, and then I did score very good marks. When my father got to know my second few results, he was so happy. He would call up his friends and tell my daughter uh, got so many marks. So finally. I did my engineering from Ramaya College here in Bangalore. Did okay, okay marks, marks I got here. But then I did get a job. That's when I uh, actually, uh, that was like a dream come true for me. So uh, when I look back, when I think about my childhood, so it, it just makes me feel so happy. I was so content. Whether you have money, you don't have money. If you put your heart and soul into whatever you are doing, you'll be very happy. So my small advice to you guys is just enjoy every minute you have. Just put heart and soul into everything you are doing because in future when we become old, we would definitely think about these days, our youth life. And then I, I, at least I want to be, I want to be having the same feeling which I have now about my youth life when I'm thinking about it in future. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you.